Let's keep this short and sharp. This is why I've got the Edox Hydra Sub Automatic. So, why have I got an Edox Hydra Sub Automatic? That is an excellent question. I often ask it myself or of myself. There's really nothing to recommend this watch. Everything that you would expect, everything that all the watch YouTubers would normally expect to say, elegance, versatility, timelessness, are all notable only by their absence in this watch. It is asymmetrical and weird and lumpy and misshapen from one side. It comes from a brand most people haven't heard of. And if they have, it's quite often for some fairly mediocre entry-level Swiss quartz, which is not particularly special and has nothing to recommend it. And yet, despite all that, I really, really love this watch. Before getting into why I love this watch, let's talk about just how it came to be my watch. I discovered Edox through another, through actually Alpina, but more importantly, I discovered Edox through the shop that I discovered Alpina through. The now departed, at least long lost and lamented by me, 8th Avenue watches that went broke in Australia, I think about two years ago now. Um, they were a bit of a boutique specializing in the oddballs. A lot of the brands which you don't normally see. And when I was there, I'd spent most of my time looking at Alpinas. And I actually bought, over the years, three Alpina watches from them. But they also sold Edox. And by and large, much of their inventory from Edox was fairly forgettable. But there were two watches that just kept drawing me in. One was um, the Geographic, I think it's called, a a slightly strange world timer, which I'm not going to go into now, but it really did catch my eye and it was something I was very keen on. But the other was this Hydra Sub. When I first saw it, it was more something to be marveled at, but in all the wrong ways, in the same way as we ogle that kind of ugly animal at the zoo, wondering just how God made that creature. I think the first couple of times I kept looking at it, it was just, what were they thinking? It was probably the number one thought in my head. But it's a small step from what were they thinking to, I wonder what it's like to wear. And so I started on my weekly walks when I'd wander through the watch area of Melbourne and would stop in at boutiques. Every now and then I would ask to try one on and it was remarkably comfortable. It's a big weighty beast, that is true, but it's comfortable on the wrist and I began to notice it's remarkably well made. The bezel action, the case transitions, everything just felt nice. And after I got used to the weirdness of the shape, I began to really enjoy playing with the master lock. It's commonly, people often talk about how much fun it is to like rotate bezels like little fidget spinners. Let me tell you, this master lock, which is by the way, utterly pointless, the crown guards um, would work fine on every watch. And this watch does actually also come with a screw down crown. So it's, I'm not sure exactly what the master lock is supposed to be protecting me against, but as a fidget spinner, as a thing to play with, it is unparalleled in the watch world. And I used to just play with this watch. I would pop in and see it every couple of weeks. And it got stuck in my mind as a watch I was really keen on. It was a watch I wanted to see, kind of like when you go to a cafe and you run into that person you know. I just wanted to see it every time I went in. And then one day it wasn't there. It got sold. Funnily enough, not, many, not much got sold out of 8th Avenue. That's why they went broke. But my little watch friend left me. And for all its weirdness, for all its strangeness, I really missed it. I missed the asymmetric little bugger. I missed that 
wonderful old vintage, very anachronistic old vintage styled aluminium bezel on an otherwise quite modern steel and anodized alloy case. It just felt like there was a gap in my life. Not long after that, 8th Avenue closed, and um, I really didn't think about this anymore until one day I just happened to see one going for sale remarkably cheaply. Cheap enough that I thought, you know what, maybe it was a summer love. Maybe it was um, a romance that wasn't really destined to continue, but I had the opportunity to pick it up cheap. It wasn't going to hurt me. So I emailed my address off to the nice man in, um, in Korea, who then offered to, who then gave me the postage, which turned out to be really cheap as well. And he sent it to me. And I have loved this strange little creature ever since. The dial shapes, the colors, that <laughs> strange and totally unnecessary master lock, the color, it's just everything about this watch just makes me happy in a way that better watches, more coherent watches, more sensible watches just can't quite manage. And ultimately, isn't that what these things are all about? It's about being happy. And maybe also being a bit strange, being a bit unnecessary, being a bit of a hodgepodge of otherwise unremarkable parts put together to produce something really fun and interesting feels like the sort of thing that fits me. So all in all, that's why I've got this watch. It's why I love this watch. And it's why I wear this watch with amazing regularity. 